Finding the remains of an unknown or long forgotten creature is always very interesting and exciting, and it happens quite often. Real hobbits, a 16 foot tall giant from Thailand, an angel that descended from heaven, and more. In this episode, you'll see the remains of creatures that no one can explain. Let's go! Did an angel descend from heaven? And the first thing I'd like to show you is this interesting shot of two archaeologists sitting next to something truly incredible. Next to them is either the skeleton of some mystical creature or the remains of a real angel. At the same time, the creature has a human skull and giant wings, as well as apparently only two legs. It remains to be seen whether this monster is real, but for some reason I think it could very well be a fake, even though the pictures look quite plausible. Anyway. What do you think about it? Share your thoughts in the comments. It'll be interesting to read. Hobbits Among Us Despite the fact that most of us deep down believe that hobbits are just fictional creatures that can be seen only in the Lord of the Rings, scientists make discoveries that are very hard to believe. They're hard to believe, but it's necessary to believe because in September 2003, while studying the history of human migration from Asia to Australia, a group of archaeologists made an unexpected discovery. In the Langbois cave, they found a nearly complete skeleton of a stunted hominid. It was just over three feet tall. In the following months, the remains of seven other similar individuals were discovered. Their ages ranged from 38,000 to 12,000 years old. Of course, no one immediately began to squeal with joy as if they'd discovered something incredible. After all, it could be the skeletons of ordinary people who suffered from some disease. However, after analyzing, it became clear with a high degree of probability that these were the skeletons of another species of humans, the Flores man species. They could have appeared on Earth more than 50,000 years ago, just before Homo sapiens. And moreover, they could live with Homo sapiens in the same time interval, hiding in the forests of the island of Flores. While people from one part of the world discover the remains of some hobbit, others, on the contrary, take a broader view and find skeletons of a 16-foot-tall giant in a Thailand cave. It happened in 2007 when a group of researchers during another expedition accidentally stumbled upon mysterious footprints. What's interesting, this place for excavation was chosen for a reason. Locals said that they personally saw giants there and that scientists should dig in this direction literally. And so they did. About 230 feet from the entrance, the cave roof noticeably widened, turning into a hall. It was here that the researchers dug up the first documented skeleton of a giant in Thailand. Science, of course, is against such finds. For example, in Armenia, they found a skeleton that was 11.4 feet long and more than 1.2 million years old. Well, guess what? Scientists mistook it for a lemur, even considering the fact that the animal doesn't have human feet, which the skeleton had on the contrary. Let's get back to our find. It was much larger than any other analogs from nearby cities and countries, but the most amazing thing was that the scientists managed to determine the exact cause of the creature's demise. A large snake was wrapped around the giant skeleton. More precisely, only its bony remains left. Researchers point out that a sharp stone is stabbed in the skull of the reptile. That is, the giant, being bitten by the snake, managed to inflict a fatal wound on the reptile, but obviously he himself died from the venom. The age of the remains is about 10 to 15,000 years, which suggests that in the past, the planet could really be inhabited by giants. A new creature. In general, you know, the list of inhabitants of the past is something incredible. And I'm not talking about people, but about unusual animals that ran around the planet in those times. One of them was this reptile, which remains were found by paleontologists. The discovery took place in Madagascar. The crazy beast found was the size of a cat and lived on Earth about 70 to 60 million years ago. Interestingly, the beast belongs to a mysterious group of mammals from the late Mesozoic era the so-called Gonwenetheria. Before that, only a single skull and a few teeth and jaw fragments were known to science. But in this case, the researchers had a whole, perfectly preserved skeleton at their disposal. It's not clear whether it's good or bad. After studying it at least a little, it'll become clear that it violates almost all generally accepted standards of evolution. 
For example, it has more holes in its skull than any known mammal. This probably increased the sensitivity of its muzzle and vibrissae, allowing more blood vessels to pass through the skull. And it also had very strange teeth, each of which was turned inward. A similar principle is found in modern snakes. But in rodents, this is something new and incomprehensible. Kraken I think that the next guest of the episode needs no introduction. After all, it's the Kraken, a giant monster of the depths, a representative of the species of which, judging by chronicles and legends, there were only two. The ocean was simply not ready to feed more of these giants. Whales became dinner for the legendary predator. People who sailed were mistaken by the Kraken for the desired large animals, and that's why the monster attacked the ships. It stuck to them with its tentacles and pulled them to the bottom with all its strength. Up until the 19th century, people especially often mentioned the Kraken. They said that they'd seen a huge octopus in person or somewhere in the distance. But then all these stories, as one, sank into oblivion. What could have happened to make one of the ocean's top predators vaporize at the snap of a finger? Unfortunately, there's no answer to this question. And personally, for example, I don't believe that the Kraken could completely disappear from the face of the Earth. Probably it's still swimming somewhere, only even deeper. By the way, here's one of the latest finds which is worth your attention. In 2011, researchers from the United States found fossil remains of Ichthyosaurus, a predatory marine reptile up to 66 feet long. And everything would be fine except that, as the analysis showed, at the moment of death it collapsed to the bottom like a stone and instantly died. But who could deal with a 66-foot-long predator so easily? Take a look here. See these sucker marks from the tentacles? This is probably the work of the Kraken. That's why I believe even less in the option that such a majestic creature simply disappeared from the face of the Earth and doesn't swim anywhere today. Dragon Dragons are far more mysterious creatures than the Kraken. The existence of a giant squid is believable. It all sounds quite logical, but a dragon flying overhead? Maybe it can shoot with fire? Okay, it's funny for me, but people from China aren't laughing. A man from Zhangjiakou County once stumbled upon a very strange skeleton that looked nothing like any of the animals known to this world. By the way, the fact that the skeleton had no wings at all didn't confuse the man. After all, his people, unlike Westerners, believe in dragons without wings those that fly through the sky, wriggling their bodies. But don't rush to believe in the fairy tale. There's still no official or scientific confirmation that the mysterious find is indeed the skeleton of a fairy tale monster. It's likely that it was an imitation of a dragon, which they decided to pass off as a real find. In general, write in the comments, what do you think about this? Mysterious Creature the chupacabra is a legendary creature said to live in Latin America and attacks animals by sucking their blood. There are many versions of the creature's appearance, but it most often described as a hybrid between a cat, a bat, a dog, and a lizard with jagged teeth and sharp claws. The appearance of the chupacabra was spotted in 1995 in Puerto Rico when the bodies of several animals were found with puncture marks on their necks and dehydrated bodies. Since then, similar incidents have occurred in Latin America, and at this time it's still unknown what's actually behind the attacks. Although the presence of the chupacabra has not been confirmed by scientific studies or pictures, people continue to search for this legendary monster in forests and mountains. It's another such study from Paraguay that's raised a number of questions. Take a look at what was found here. Doesn't this body look like the chupacabra of legends and writings? What do you think? Alien I don't even know what's better, finding traces of the mystical chupacabra or witnessing an alien event. In the USA, in her own garden, an ordinary woman came across such an interesting body. As befits a frightened person, she armed herself with a camera, took a couple or three pictures and posted them on the internet in the hope that someone she knew would give her a reasonable explanation. However, no reasonable response followed. People on the contrary planted even more doubts in her mind. 
after such footage, you begin to believe in mysticism, and legends about various creepy creatures no longer seem something incredible. I suggest you look at other mythical creatures. Some of them could actually exist. Yorogumo The legend of Yorogumo originated during the Edo period in Japan in the early 17th to mid-19th century. It's a spooky spider ghost capable of transforming into a beautiful woman. In most legends, Yorogumo seduces men, lures them to his home, an abandoned cabin in the woods, plays a Japanese loot, then wraps them in nets of spider web and devours, or leaves them in the web to be devoured by Yorogumo's offspring. It's believed that when the spider reaches the age of 400 years, he acquires magical powers. There's a similar character in another Asian country. A Philippine legend has it that Mananangal is a beautiful woman by day who at night turns into a vicious, scary, blood-drinking monster. In fact, Mananangal is a kind of Philippine vampire, but it's much scarier and more dangerous than Western vampires. Mananangal is said to be a hideous creature that splits in half at night, releases webbed wings from his shoulders like a bat, and flies off in search of victims, leaving the lower half standing on the ground. Mananangal uses his proboscis-like tongue to suck the blood of sleeping humans. Pregnant women and sick people are a favorite prey, and the creature can smell them from miles. You can kill Mananangal by pouring salt, crushed garlic, or ashes on his separated lower half. Even though the year is 2022, many Filipinos believe in this creature, fear it greatly, and keep plenty of salt at home in case this winged monster shows up in the middle of the night. Liko Liko is a terrible character of East Slavic mythology. It's an evil and frightening humanoid creature, which is distinguished by its tall stature and lean build. Like Cyclops, it has one eye, so it sees within a narrow range. It feeds on the flesh and suffering of humans and animals. It usually stays away from large settlements and spends most of its life in the woods, feeding on native animals and birds, which often angers the Leshy, another character of Slavic mythology. But if Liko comes across a solitary person or a small group of people, it will not miss the chance. Having stuck to one person, it plunges them into despondency and begins to feed on their negative emotions, reminiscent of the Dementors from Harry Potter movies, isn't it? Expecto Patronum! Once it's fed on a person's suffering, Liko grows stronger. The more negative emotions the victim experienced initially, the stronger Liko will be. It's believed that once Liko has possessed a person, it's virtually impossible to get rid of it. It will follow the victim everywhere for the rest of their life, attacking those who will be near the victim. It may seem that J.K. Rowling was inspired by Liko when she created the Dementors. In fact, though, that's not true. According to the writer, she invented Dementors when she was going through a severe depression. It was these memorable characters that became the embodiment of longing and grief. In this episode, there's another character that appeared in Harry Potter movies, and you know it well. It's the Basilisk. Apparently, when creating the huge snake from the Chamber of Secrets, Rowling was inspired by the Basilisk from myths and legends. The Basilisk is described in different ways in ancient sources, but usually it's a giant serpent or a rooster with a snake's tail. This creature can kill birds with its fiery breath, other animals with its hiss, and humans with its gaze. Legends say that the basilisk is born from a snake or toad egg, which was hatched by a rooster. By the way, the word basilisk is translated from ancient Greek as little king, so this creature is often called the serpent king. Interestingly, during the Middle Ages, the basilisk was blamed for plague epidemics and mysterious murders. Okay, many of you probably knew about the mythical basilisk, but what about the Vouvre? You ever heard of it? In the meantime, it's another creepy snake of myths and legends. The Vouvre is the king or queen of snakes. In the forehead of this creature is a sparkling stone, a bright red ruby and its appearance resembles a fiery serpent, the guardian of underground treasures. The Vouvre can only be seen once a year, 
when it goes out to drink and fish in lakes or rivers. At that moment, it leaves its jewel on the shore. It's believed that whoever manages to get hold of the ruby of this creepy snake will become fabulously rich and receive a portion of the underground treasures that the Vouvre guards. Kelpie When we talk about Scottish mysteries and legendary creatures, first of all, we think of the Loch Ness Monster, although it can be called legendary only hardly because it's more likely a cryptid like Bigfoot or Chupacabra, but Kelpie is quite a mythical creature. It's a Scottish spirit which, like Nessie, lives in the water. It's believed that it can be found in many rivers and lakes. Although mythology says that sometimes Kelpie can take human form, most of the time it appears as a horse, a very scary horse with two long horns on its head, which makes it look like a cross between a horse and a bull. Sometimes Kelpie's eyes light up or they're full of tears, and its gaze brings chills or attracts like a magnet. Kelpie's footprints are easy to recognize. Its hooves are placed backwards. To defeat a Kelpie, you must bait it with oats and slip a bridle over its head while casting a spell that will make it docile and helpless. Dubuk In Jewish mythology, it's believed that if a person was evil while alive, they'll become a Dubuk after death. A Dubuk is a frightening and evil spirit who cannot part with an earthly existence because of its crimes and seeks a living organism into which it can move. In essence, a Dubuk is a demon. This concept is closer to us. The reasons of occurrence of a Dubuk is that during their life, a person has committed exactly so many sins that they're not capable to be reborn, but they don't go to hell yet. And so their soul, terrorized by various evil spirits, is forced to seek refuge in the body of a living person. According to mythology, it's easier to give a Dubuk settlement to weakened people, but there have been cases when a Dubuk occupied the bodies of people known for their holiness. The evilness of a Dubuk lies not only in the fact that it takes control of another's body, but also in the fact that the person in whom a Dubuk moved suffers a significant physical disorder, being unable to combine two spiritual essences in themselves. Dubuk, Kelpie, Liko, Mananaganal, and the other creepy characters from myths and legends I've told you about are merely fictional characters. They don't exist in reality, nor did they ever exist. But not all mythical beings can be said so. Some of them were quite real. Stay tuned. At the end of the episode, I'll tell you about three characters of myths and legends that actually existed. Unicorn Let's start with the big guns. It would seem that the unicorn should be a mythical character. After all, where in nature can one find a horse with one horn sticking out of its forehead? Well, maybe there's no such horse, but there is definitely a creature with one horn. I'm talking about Elasmotherium, or the Siberian unicorn. This is an extinct genus of the rhino which inhabited the steppes of Eurasia during the Ice Age. As you can learn from the cave drawings, the distinctive long horn in the forehead was a feature of this ancient rhino. In addition, this rhino partially resembled a horse, so it's possible that it served as a prototype for the creation of the unicorn and its inclusion to folklore. I wonder if the horn of the Elasmotherium had magical properties, like the unicorn's horn. Cyclops Cyclops are no less famous mythical creatures. I've already mentioned them today talking about the East Slavic Liko. These one-eyed creatures appeared in many legends and myths and even became one of the key archetypes of the legends. But were Cyclops really there? It's unlikely that there were many one-eyed people walking around the planet, but the prototype of Cyclops is quite obvious. According to one version, it's the skeleton of a dwarf elephant. The central nasal opening in the skull of such an elephant could be mistaken for a giant eye socket which resulted in the myth of the existence of one-eyed creatures. By the way, dwarf elephants lived on the Mediterranean islands, which is why Cyclops are one of the central characters of Greek mythology. Kraken Release the Kraken! And finally, we'll visit the sea, where according to ancient legend, the Kraken lived. It was a huge creature with giant tentacles which attacked the ships, wrapped them, and sank them in the depths of the sea. But were the ships really sunk by the Kraken? Modern scientists agree that the Kraken, as it's depicted in myths and legend, did not exist. But its prototype is known. It's very likely that the ships were attacked by giant squids, 
They can grow to enormous sizes, reaching 8 to 18 meters in length and weighing half a ton. Scientists learned about these squids and described them only in the 19th century, so it's not surprising that until then, sailors had no idea what kind of giant clams pounced on their ships. That's why they came up with the Kraken. That's all, guys. Which character from myths and legends would you like to see in the real world? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.